All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is my good buddy, Gaius Publius. Gaius is a writer and contributing editor for America Blog, which you can find at americablog.com. You can also follow him on Twitter at Gaius underscore Publius. Gaius, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thank you, man. It's a pleasure. All right, so Gaius, uh, even though it's 2014, if you look at a lot of websites, if you watch any of the Sunday shows, what you keep hearing is talk about 2016. And as much as, you know, we as much as it's horrible to actually talk about 2016 now, progressives we have to start talking about it because the truth is what you'll see in a lot of places is how inevitable Hillary Clinton's nomination to be the nom- the Democratic presidential nominee is. That's what they keep saying. It's inevitable that, that, that she is going to be the nominee. There are some very big issues surrounding that. Tell us what you think here. Well, I think that you're right, that, that this really is the time to be talking about 2016 and to be looking at Hillary Clinton. She's doing a terrific job of establishing a... It, it, it's kind of like... Uh, Blocking the paint for a for a big uh, <laughs> a big center. She's making sure yeah. that no one can get near the basket but her, and she hasn't decided whether she's going to take the shot or not. But nobody's going to come close. I mean, there, it, it's literally an outside shot to get it over her head into the basket. So we have to decide now: Are we willing to put up another corporate Democrat as our nominee? This will be uh, the fifth term of Bill Clinton or the third term of Barack Obama. Or do we want to do something about that? And if we want to do something about it, now really is the time. We, we, we don't have the luxury of being reactive. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and again, it, it really is horrible that we have to start talking about this now. But we do. There, there is there is no ifs, ands, and buts about it because they have the, all the implementation in place. They had their, their you know they're on the ground in places. They are they have very well set up that they want her to be the nominee and that she's she's essentially going for it unless she makes some surprising decision that she's not going to. What's even more discouraging is that. You know, I, I, again, I, I don't want Hillary to be the, the nominee. I don't want Hillary to be the president. Um, but, but the thing is, I would love for someone like Elizabeth Warren to be the nominee and to be president. I think that would be great. But she, Elizabeth Warren has said she's not running. We also have a, a supposedly a letter uh, signed by a bunch of Democratic female senators supporting Hillary. Let's delve into that a little bit. Well, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I Actually, there was an article by Ruth Marcus. Uh, in the Washington Post, I believe it was, yes, the Washington Post on June 20th, in which uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren was interviewed, and there's some sev- there are several quotes in that in that article. The title is Elizabeth Elizabeth Warren's Mission in Washington. If anybody wants to look it up, uh, she, Marcus tries to tease out of Elizabeth Warren some more definitive statement: Are you running? Are you not running? Do you endorse Hillary? Do you not endorse Hillary? And she puts, she, the writer, puts Warren in the position of being very careful with her words, which is a bit of a tell, but maybe it's also a bit of a tease for us that there might be something there when there isn't. So, for example, Marcus asks Elizabeth Warren, why not simply declare that you're not going to run for president in 2016? You keep saying this in the present tense, I'm not running. Why not say... I'm not running and I'm not going to be a candidate. And Elizabeth Warren keeps dancing around that because I'm not running today and it's a distraction for me to keep coming back to that, she says. Uh, Quoting Warren, it's absolutely crucial to stay focused right now on the set of issues and that's what I'm doing. And then she goes on to the set of issues. It's, it's, It's rather an interesting possibility. I think myself that Elizabeth Warren might run um, we have age is a bit of an issue for Elizabeth Warren. If she, if she is thinking of running, I think four years might be a little bit too late for her, especially if, uh, if she's running against a second-term um, Democratic president. And I think Warren has the fire for the issues rather than deep personal ambition that other people don't have, so she might gather herself for that reason. But again, we have to get Hillary out of the paint in order for anybody to get in. And if Hillary occupies that central position going into late 2015 and then decides not to run, nobody else but, uh, say, Joe Biden or another uh, bank uh, 
corporate finance candidate is going to come up with the with the infrastructure and the funding that's going to allow for a successful run. So we're going to be stuck unless somebody jumps in early or unless we force Hillary out. Yeah. Again, I'm talking to my friend Gaius Publius from America Blog, americablog.com. You can find him on Twitter at Gaius underscore Publius. It, you know, again, this is... The, Honestly, guys, today is one of those days. We're we're taping this on Monday morning. This is one of those mornings where I'm just having those those feelings that it this it it is horrible being a progressive. It is it is it is awful being a progressive. So this morning we have all these ridiculous Supreme Court rulings coming down of this insane right wing court that's that's striking down da- striking a major blow against unions. They're striking a major blow against uh, you know essentially saying that a corporation can have religion and if a corporation you know objects. <laughs> to something on supposed religious grounds. They don't have to follow the law, which is insane, which is crazy. And so we have we have this we have to deal with. But then on the same side, we also have to deal with the fact that we can't have a, a, a you know, that the planet climate wise can't survive another president who does nothing, who, who completely buys into dirty energy, be it fracking, be it uh, with, with methane going in the air, be it uh, perhaps, you know, approving KXL or, or, or all, na- you name it, right? So we, we're in this horrible position of, of we really need drastic action to help the climate and save humanity now. This happens, has to happen now. And realistically, Hillary Clinton does not appear to be that person. You know, I, I wish she was. She's not. Hillary Clinton was actually at the State Department and is the one who actually conducted all of these BS uh, tests and and studies on the environmental impact of KXL. So actually, I, I'm someone who really thinks you could actually put the KXL pipeline right on Hillary's doorstep as the person at the State Department who ran those horrible corporate funded environmental reviews but so so we have this this in, in addition so we have you know Hillary being supposedly the anointed one who is who who has to, who's going to win the nomination who theoretically is going to be going to do nothing when it comes to climate and in fact make the thing worse but then you also have this other hand where we have this horrible uh, you know you know right wing court so i'm just that was kind of my end of my rant here guys so i'm going to let you kind of comment on that there <laughs> well uh, i always enjoy your rants matt uh, there's a couple of ways to slice through this it's like an apple you can you can slice through from any number of angles so from the climate angle, Hillary's a carbon president, a carbon candidate. Yeah. There's no question she's been making speeches like Obama about being in favor of North American energy independence, which means burning North American carbon, which means Al- Alberta carbon, as well as all the fracked natural gas that uh, Exxon is making a play to own. Exxon is the largest natural gas company in the United States, I believe, thanks to its acquisitions. So she's going to be a climate president. And from a climate standpoint, the the last clear shot that anybody's going to have in this country to do anything real about climate is the president who's elected in 2016. Yeah. That's, uh, That's the first thing. The second thing is, is she going to be any less corporate than Barack Obama? The answer has to be no on that, which leads to the question, is she electable? Just on that basis, how tired will people be, uh, people like you and I, uh, of voting for people like Barack Obama and feeling betrayed? No matter what she says in the election, will anybody trust her? Does that make her vulnerable to the, um, to the candidate from the Republican Party? It quite possibly does. I mean, we really need somebody that, that can be supported. And yet, the corporate America, by the way, the Supreme Court is not a religious court. It's a corporate court. Hobby Lobby yeah. is not a religious decision. It's about corporate rights, as is the second decision that came out today, the one about um, public unions and restricting their ability to collect dues. Mm-hmm. So th- 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 I, th- I think people like Guy Saperstein has written in um, Alternet, very cogently, uh, she may be an unelectable candidate. She may be the person who can guarantee to herself the nomination for the Democrat of the Democratic Party, and then just present such a lackluster can- uh, candidacy or lackluster campaign that people will vote for her. Why? Well, there's the first woman president. Uh, argument, which is a considerable argument, but does sure. that offset all of the other reasons to be uninterested in her for all of the other anti-progressive reasons? I don't think so. I think this may be a real risk for the Democratic Party. <laughs> 